All right, everyone, welcome back to um, late night IMO shortlist. We have an actual IMO shortlist bomb this time. So this time we have 2006, and this is the statement. So um, basically, my idea is that uh, I was thinking about this a little bit while we were doing the other problem. Roughly, I want to say like induct, by which I mean, uh, can you say when you see it? Yeah, I see. Okay, yeah. So let's let's take like just three random odd squares, right? Then what you then n minus one of like n minus something like less than or equal to thirty four will be divisible by four or something like this. But basically, like you you can make stuff if n is big, you can make it divisible by four, and you want to sort of repeat. Uh, Maybe. So the problem is like I I don't know what the threshold should be. I mean, right now as as, as written, this won't work like as this this can't work as written because uh like there's no threshold. If I th set a threshold m, then like each time I do the induction, the threshold gets higher. But I think the idea should be along these lines. So let's see what I can do. Um, oh, that's a good idea. Um, yeah. So the other, the other, this, the other idea that's good is if there is a, if there's a fairly large perfect square. Um, So let's say like if x squared is between n and n halves, then subtract it and well, also induct down. But the problem that you also get is that uh, hmm. it, basically the finitely many thing is an issue. Like you have finitely many counterexamples, so you want to not like. Hit one of the counter examples when you descend like this. Uh... Yeah, but both the both induction ideas sort of run into this problem where we're a little worried about. Hmm. On the other hand, so there's a theorem that says, um, I mean, th there's a theorem that says that any integer can be written as four squares. Any integer can be written as the sum of four squares, but unfortunately not necessarily distinct. So all I need to do is like the other idea does cover every integer, does it? If I have like n minus x squared, like what if n minus x squared is not a is one of the counterexamples or something, right? On the other hand, if I found like an interval for which like um, there's not too many bad numbers, it would also kind of just be okay. How big do I think the threshold is? Um, yeah, like if 51 
If every number bigger than 50 is works, then what I could... In principle, I guess what I could do is I could manually inspect like 50 to like 100-ish. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> do I want to go this route? Here you go, like... Oh Jesus. How big do I think the counter example is? 7 mod 8 numbers are the worst ones. Those are the ones um, for which... You need odd squares to... You need a 4, you need a like 4 and then 1, 1, 1. So... Actually that's not bad, that's like... 1, 9, 25... 39 Yeah, so I wonder if you can just find an interval for which you can go from like M to 2 uh, Like if, you, if I can paint an interval from X to 2X for some fixed X And get all the numbers in such an interval Then this idea Will kind of work Right, as long as you can find a square such that uh, n minus x squared is greater than 23. If, if we think 23 is the biggest counterexample. Uh, yeah, that's why I, why I write fill in 24 or something. Yeah, as long as this number is at least 24 and also x squared is half greater than n halves or something like that. Oh shoot, 24 also. 25, 25! Uh, so if... If I can promise that there's a square that does this, then I'm okay. And for most large n, this should be true. Um, what's the exact condition I need on n in order to promise that such a square exists? So on the one hand, I need n to be at least 50. On the other hand, if n is at least 50, then... Do, do I run into weird integers? Oh no. 27. Yikes. <laughs> it gets worse and worse. <laughs> Please. So anyway, th I think the correct choice is that x should be... Uh, okay, let, let's call the threshold m. Um, and then x is like... The... x is the floor of square root n minus the threshold n. And I need this thing to be bigger than n halves always. So I can write this as root n minus m minus 1 squared is bigger than n over 2. Expand the life left hand side, it's like n minus n minus 2 root. Okay, and if I rearrange this, this is n over 2 plus m. Yeah, so it's, I, I don't need n much bigger than capital M. Oh, uh, I just need n bigger than like... 2m two, two is not quite enough, but like 2m plus... 2m plus like square root m is should do it. Okay, so what do we think the threshold is? Like, if the threshold's not too big, we can just run it over, right? 
Like, th 31 we think doesn't work. Do we think anything bigger than 31 works? How do you, can you get 32 actually? How do you get 32? <laughs> All right. Let's do 36. Okay, 25 plus 43 doesn't work. What if we just DP table get this out of the way? I, I think that sounds reasonable. I also wonder if like, so it sounds like all the, th the, the problem is all the three mod four numbers. Three, like the three mod four numbers are causing problems. So. Like if I just optimize a little bit. Yeah, so rather than trying to prove that all the, um... Can I use the... I think the algorithm is pretty ad hoc. I think the algorithm is called try for small numbers and see what happens. Forty-three doesn't work. Okay. How do you do forty-four? Forty-seven also doesn't work. Uh, seven mod eight numbers are really bad. Mm, okay, I'm not sure we can do this just by brute force. Okay. Here, okay, here's a different idea. What if I try to get it down to a 1 mod 4 number? Because we're promised that a 1 mod 4 number is always the sum of two squares. No, sorry, that's false. God, that! Uh, 1 mod 4 numbers in some interval. <laughs> sum of two squares. Oh god, this is so bad. Uh... Yeah. 
Yeah, I had the same thoughts. So you try to pick a big square so that it's 1 mod 4, and you try to get all the 1 mod 4 numbers in a certain interval. That seems like it's quite feasible, because only the only ones that don't work are the ones that have weird 3 mod 4 factors, and there aren't too many of those. So... I'm just trying to think how big of a threshold we're going to need in order for that to work, though. That's because in worst case, n is 3 mod 4, so you need to do this like subtraction operation three times. Or something like that. Um, I wonder if the parody idea would have been better. Because that's a little more control. There's, like, you only subtract off a little bit. But the problem is the magnitude decreases a lot more rapidly. No, I think the problem is definitely- I'm not surprised that all this is true. Like, Lagrange's theorem tells you that a number is just like the sum of four squares. And so the only thing that you're worried about is, oh, maybe you can't, you know, some of the squares coincide. But that's not that likely, right? Work. I had I had the thought, but I don't know if there's a good way to deal with it. Um, I mean, what are you gonna do with two a squared plus b squared plus c squared? I guess. <laughs> like, I guess you can hope that. Yeah, th I had the same thought. Uh. I want to show all one map for our are eventually good. Yeah, I think that's a, I think that's the best approach. Okay, so for one mod four things, where do I start? Hmm. And three x squared plus. Okay, how, someone tell me how many base cases I need. So the only- okay, I claim- I claim 1 mod 4 numbers. Are eventually okay. So the only ones I have to check are... It'll never be two x squared, so I'm only worried about the numbers that have uh that are the product of two, three mod four like some like some product of three mod four primes. So three, like twenty one is like one of the first ones. I think twenty one actually is fine. Is this four squared plus two squared plus one squared? Actually, hang on. What's this three squared theorem say? Um. The 33 is... Five, four, three. 
Not A Kappa 7, okay. 33 is actually bad, right? Can, can you write, write this as a sum of distinct squares? Alright, so that's bad. Fifty one is okay, fifty five. Aren't those numbers three mod four? Fifty one is three mod four, right? I don't really care about it. Fifty nine is bad. Oh, that's not good news. No, 59 is also 3 mod 4. Guys, I'm looking at one more font numbers. <sighs> okay. Um, you know, this is actually, this will actually be faster if I use my tablet. Um, because I, I need more space. Okay, so I'm going to write all the 1 mod 4 numbers. It's actually it's, it's actually easier. I don't think too hard about this. And I how big of an interval do I want? I want like Okay, uh, well, uh, here's like the first gazillion. 65 is bad. No, it's not. It's 7 squared plus 4 squared. So, which ones? The only ones I have to worry about are the ones that have uh, 3 mod 4 factors in them. So, 33 are, is a, is potentially worrisome. Uh, 45, I don't care about. I, that one. So what are like the 3 mod 4 primes? 3, 7, 11, 19. So I need, I, I'm looking at the numbers that are like products of these things. So 33, 77, 57, 130, yeah. 209. I guess 105 technically. Okay, so which ones of these can't I write? So 33 is actually not possible. So 57 is... Is that possible? That one's fine. 77 is probably alright, right? 8 squared plus 3 squared plus 2 squared. And 105 is 10 squared plus 2 squared plus 1 squared. So this is much more efficient. Uh, right. Yeah, so all of these should be okay. Uh, oh, actually, I need to check. Hang on, there's more primes. Uh, 8 squared plus 2 squared plus 1 squared. Um, 87. Oh, sorry, that's not what. 93. I need to check 93. 64, What was the checking optimization? Yeah, yeah. So the check optimization is that um, the only, if a number is a product of 1 mod 4 primes, then it's guaranteed to be a sum of 2 squares. Also, if it's divisible by like 9, for example, you just factor out the 9. So the only ones you have to check are ones where there is a 3 mod 4 prime factor that appears with odd multiplicity. That doesn't happen that often, actually. And, you know, it's these circle numbers here. Okay, so, um, so I think this is a complete check that three mod four numbers. How many board cases can I generate? I'll, I'll just keep generating a few more. One thirteen. I'm not really able to check whether these are prime, but it doesn't matter. I just need to check for bad prime factors.
133 and 43. I need to check these two. Um, One thirty three is like Yeah, these are all pretty big numbers. Uh can you can just do a hundred oh you can add a hundred. Uh that's a really good point. <laughs> Because I didn't use a hundred for anything up to... Okay, so we get everything up to 197. So everything from 37 to 197 is good. So all 1 mod 4. From 37... 197 are okay and actually if I can do that then I can probably take the next one right like I can add yeah and use squares not only are they good they they use squares are most 100 everything here is at most 100 so what that means is I can now add like 169 or something. Uh, that, that's actually big. So, but now if I add 121. Wait, actually, why didn't we do this before? Hang on. Wait, why didn't we do this before? This is just better, right? Like you, you have a set and then add 121. So everything from 158 to... Um, 279 okay and uses at most 121 yeah yeah and yeah so you just kind of keep pushing like this so that will give us every one mod four number um yeah you're you're actually yeah so this is correct it, it's like a constructive approach is better than a destructive one um Okay, so you hit all the one mod four numbers, and actually, if you just vary this like very slightly, it'll also work. So you know what happens is the growth rate of this is a lot faster than the growth rate of the squares, right? So plus one hundred forty four, so this is like three hundred two, to um, four hundred twenty three, and so eventually. Um, yeah, you, you just kind of get something that's a lot stronger. Plus 169, 592. Yeah, so this is like 471 to 592. Um, yeah, so now, now we should be okay. Because, um... Actually, first of all, I misadded. This this goes to 318, right? And then 462, and then 631. Yeah, and now we're fine because once you get this... Uh, Yeah, this is clean. Hang on, wait, why is there a gap here? Is there actually a gap? Oh, 302, 460, no, are you, sh are you, sh is like 464 just not achieved anywhere? 
<laughs> hey, are you are you serious? No, that that's a joke, right? Oh, god damn it. Oh, sorry. I, I'm just being stupid. I, I don't care about the lower bound. I only care about the upper bound. Yeah, yeah. So all the numbers up to... Yeah, yeah no, no, this one. Uh, also, okay, yeah, I, I should be... Hang on, I can't use 121, because that will break my 1 mod 4. Uh... Okay, wait, I have to be a little careful. Um, Alright, let, let, let me try to be... So, we did this thing where we added 100, we got everything from 37 to 197. Um, Alright, let, let me do this correctly. So, then... Um, so we can, from 37 to 197, we got all the 1 mod 4 numbers using squares that were only up to like 100. Then if I add um, 144, you can get everything from 37 to 341 with mod mod 4 squares that are all at most 144. And then the next one is 196. And again, you can get uh, 537. Okay, yeah, I, I should be careful. So then you do 12 squared, then you add 14 squared. Yeah, and then, okay, so eventually you can get all the 1 mod 4 numbers. And finally, to do the reduction, you pick like... Yeah, right. So because when I do this, I don't use... I never use 11 squared, 13 squared, or 15 squared. So now I can use that for the general situation. And then I'll work. Okay. Okay, great. Okay, see, told you it was easy. I, it actually took longer than I wanted it to do. I was hoping it would die in 10 minutes, and it took us more like 20. Uh, Alright, so let, let me do the write-up now, because so I don't have to think about it later. And then we can call it a day. This write-up should be quick. Fun problem. What does stog mean? Is, is stog just strong? Computational fortitude. The Ibero American 2020. What the heck? You're correct. I don't know how that happened. Oh, uh, because I remember typing the full solution. Okay, uh, thanks for letting me know. I have to add that to my to do list. Uh, finish high pyro. Okay, uh, anyways. Okay, so... Okay, so... We prove the following claims. We start with, okay, we start with the following base cases. Base case, uh... Every number, every 1 mod 4 number can be re uh, greater than at least 37 is good.
more strongly. I think perfect squares. Actually, let me not do that. At least 37 is good. So we only need to check numbers which have a 3 mod for prime factor with odd multiplicity by Christmas with theorem. This is easy because 30, 57 is equal to 6 squared plus 4 squared plus 2 squared plus 1 squared plus 69 is 8 squared plus 2 squared plus 1 squared. Yeah, the, and today has been a long day. <laughs> so, okay. Claim now, then the following corollaries occur. Take place. Every one mod four number from 37 to 97 can be written with squares at most uh, 81 by adding a hundred uh, oh hang on from 37 to um, 133 there's, there's more cases I need So 105 is 10 squared plus 2 squared plus 1 squared, 109 is 10 squared plus, sorry, 129 is 10 squared plus 2 squared, and 133 is 8 squared plus 7 squared plus 4 squared plus 2 squared. The other claim. Every one mod four number between 37 and 197 can be written with squares at most 100. We never use a... Okay, then by adding 144, every one mod four number from 37 to 331. Then by adding 196 squares in the set. Zero squared. Three hundred five hundred twenty seven, right? So in this way, every sufficiently large 1 mod 4 number may be written as sum of distinct squares. Yeah, the self-referential v6 was quite something. So the sum of distinct squares from the set. One squared, two squared. Ten squared.
Okay. We did it. All right. All right, so let's see how this looks. Um, Where's the good PDF viewer? Okay, uh, theory, uh, casework, uh, size, <laughs> no. <laughs> it's 128. Well, I'm glad that we... Your claim is wrong, Evan. Which one? Some things greater than 121 require 121. Things between... Oh, freak! Uh, you're correct. Oh, no. Alright. Uh, you're right, you're right, you're right. Okay, so this has to be 11 squared. Okay, three. Whatever. Yeah, the fair amount of, yeah, 11 squared shows up. It's fine. I'm pretty sure 11 squared probably is actually... Can't just pick, yeah, sorry. So this should be 13, 15, 17. It's how you get a six. <laughs> if I'm grading and I notice this, you always get a six. Don't make mistakes. I, I feel so hypocritical a lot of time when I tell students not to make mistakes because I make mistakes all the time, but I'm pretty sure I'm still supposed to say that because I'm the teacher. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm actually like not very careful myself, but don't be like me. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a funny problem. Alright, well thanks everyone who's stuck out the whole time. Uh, I guess this, this makes up for the last two streams where I cut off the math pretty early because I was tired. <laughs> we got a B6, N6, and uh, that Geo, which is 